Hey guys, just a, a quick um, little mention about carbohydrates being the preferred fuel uh, for human beings. So the whole premise uh, about uh, carbs being the preferred fuel is based on the fact that when carbs are reintroduced uh, into the body, the body stops using uh, fat as uh, energy and will use carbs as if it's its favorite, as if it's such a treat like, oh my god, screw this fat, I'm going to go use some carbs. Um, the whole reason is is that the body has a tight control on carbohydrate uh, blood levels, right? So uh, I'm going to use Canadian uh, metrics here, but usually the blood is around five millimoles per uh, liter. That's about um, five grams. That's about like a tablespoon of sugar in your blood, uh, and that's what your body likes. So you can imagine when you're drinking a Pepsi with 40 grams that flood into your body. Um, <laughs> you're going to use that sugar right away. The insulin is going to spike to try and push that out of the bloodstream uh, rapidly because high blood sugars, uh, I mean, we know this, uh, patients coming in with type 2 diabetes with high blood sugars are unconscious. So high sugar is not something that the body wants. It has a tight control on it. Therefore, that's why when carbs are introduced, they're always going to be used and burned through and the body's going to use insulin to put it somewhere outside of that bloodstream. Um, when we so the same rationale that oh well you know what when carbs are there they're always used because the blo the body just loves to use it well if I drank a, a couple of shots of vodka and um, uh, that enters the bloodstream the body would stop burning those carbs and would end up um, burning the alcohol because it's a toxin and again it doesn't want that in the blood so the idea that just because you it will stop using one fuel and go to the next one to burn it off first has nothing to do with preferred fuel. So the preferred fuel is fat. Every animal has a high fat diet. Um, there's uh, the Game Changer. It's a, a new propaganda vegan film that's coming out and uh, there's this uh, vegan strongman and somebody says to the <laughs> vegan strongman, how come you're so strong like an ox? And the vegan strongman looks at him and goes, have you ever seen an ox eat a steak? Implying that, well, you know what? You can get big and strong with vegetables. Okay, well, you're not a ruminant animal. You see, an ox is a ruminant animal and they have a rumen and they are not eating the herbs. It's the bacteria that's eating the herbs. So an ox is actually on a high fat diet. Cows uh, ingest about 90% uh, of their macronutrients uh, is, is fatty acids. So they take the cellulose, they eat it, the bacteria in their rumens and the compartments, fermented, etc., turn that into fatty acids, and then the cow eats a high fat diet. The same for gorillas, and when we notice that carnivores that um, have essential fats is because we can't produce that kind of fat fermentation with the bacteria. We have bacteria, but we cannot supply fat from cellulose. Hence why ox you know, are strong, because they're just like everybody else, they're on a high fat diet. So the carnivores like the lions and the tigers and the bears, oh my, uh, because they're, they're, they're carnivorous, so the lion, you'll see that they'll always go for the abdominal cavity, which is the most um, fat, right? So that whole abdom abdominal ca cavity, the, the carnivores are going to go after that in the wild because they need fat. Therefore, that's why it's not ridiculous to be on a high-fat diet um, for humans. Basically, uh, everything's on a high-fat diet. It's just a question whether uh, that uh, fat is uh, essential or not. If it's essential, it means that your digestive tract can't supply those essential fats. And um, if you're a cow, well, there's no essential fats for cows because they just need to supply the essential carbohydrates and the protein which they're able to use inside of uh, the, these grasses, uh, these grass and forages. So just to tell you that 
if you're using a uh, higher fat diet, lower carb diet, so low carb, high fat, uh, what's gonna happen is uh, if you're supplying what's essential, the fat and the protein, you will be able through a process called gluconeogenesis to um, uh, produce glucose. And the great thing about the body is so much smarter than you. Uh, look at all the endocrine system. It's all perfectly calibrated until we you know, start screwing it all, all up with our diet. But um, everything is uh, tightly regulated. Therefore, when you lay off things that are non-essential, and it's just a fact, I know people hate to admit it, uh, some are in denial, some are some have no clue that it's not essential to eat carbohydrates. Uh, but because it, it's not essential, um, when we allow the body just to produce the amount of carbohydrates that's required, then it's a supply and demand. Therefore, the insulin um, is under tight regulation, it's in proper balance, working well with glucose, because your body is producing it like any other hormone uh, on a supply and, de and demand basis, creating a low insulin environment, creating uh, a, a, an appropriate um, metabolism, basically. So I don't want to go too long. I just want to say uh, that carbohydrates are not essential, uh, that our body can produce it, and that um, the carnivores go after a high-fat diet, the herbivores are on a high-fat diet, and if we look at Weston Price and his research that he did, a prominent scientist in the 20th century who happened to be a dentist that went all around the world to far off tribes, modernized, uh, that were touched by modernization and that were not touched by modernization. And we see human beings that are strict carnivores, some living on milk, blood and meat with the most superb and impressive physiques and minds. Almost, uh, pro, almost like unable, like their their cavity rates was 0.7. They looked uh, at 300 and some skulls, uh, and there was 0.7 um, percent had uh, caries, and the other modernized uh, uh, group had around 87 or 97 once they touched the modern diet. So uh, I'm going to stop right here. I just want you to rethink the assumptions and the myths that have been told, carbs are not essential, our body can produce it, and just like lions, tigers, gorillas, and everybody else, we're all using a high-fat diet, humans included. We are the only mammals uh, that are afraid to eat what we're made of. Mainly, we are animals, we have animal flesh, it is different than plant flesh, and when we eat it, it's in a bioavailable form, it's uh, all the vitamins are in the proper forms all the minerals are attached in the you know in the proper form everything's absorbed uh, it's not the same when we get into the plant kingdom so um, that's pretty much it carbs are not essential and just because the body uses it first has nothing to do with it being uh, a preferred fuel it has to do with the body's uh, need to keep a close and tight regulation of the amount of blood uh, the amount of sugar flowing through your blood it has nothing to do with preferred in fact uh, it's reacting and burning that very quickly because it sees it as um, something that's not normal and our blood sugars would never fluctuate that much because in the wild um, before uh, the dawn of agriculture even we didn't have access we were, we were scavenging for like these wild uh, plants and most of uh, cultures started to incorporate plants uh, during famines when they understood that um, there was a possibility to pull some sort of nutrients and calories out of it. Then some plants became uh, adopted culturally in, um, for medicinal reasons and for times of scarcity. But real food is considered animal food. It's always been considered animal food. Um, do some research, look at agriculture. The dawn of agriculture did not improve people's health, did not uh, make them better and stronger. Their stature went down. Their, um, they developed a, a lot of diseases, dental uh, malformations, um, bone, bone um, you know, density went down. There was a lot of disease that entered. They lived long, uh, they didn't live longer, they lived less longer. It also created social classes and uh, that uh, led to, um, you know, different social classes, slavery, domination, illness, and basically what we did is we uh, traded uh, calories for nutrients. 
that way um, by allowing us uh, to have such an insane amount of calories we were able to explode our population uh, that was out of whack with nature if we stayed hunters and gatherers what would have happened is we would have somewhat been limited um, by the amount of ruminant animals and stuff that, that we had but once we were able to figure out how to get the massive amount and then after uh, the massive amount of carbohydrates from these plants we were able to supply calories for a larger population but that population overall was very uh, was not as healthy because there was no nutrient density if we look at um, the Egyptians that were eating a uh, high grain diet in the time their teeth were ground down to, to the pulp I mean you can imagine there was no white flour it was all stone ground uh, um, you know, a kind of a wheat and stuff like that. Uh, they had modern diseases. Um, they had, um, you could uh, see in some of the art that they had man boobs. I'm serious. So uh, that's it, guys. Um, yep, bye.